Hello, it's Scott Manley here, and today in another episode of Why Rockets Fail, I want to head over to the Soviet Union in the 1960s. After taking an early lead in the space race, the Soviet Union also was eyeing the moon. But to send a spacecraft to the moon, they would need something that could maneuver in space, rendezvous and dock, and that would be the Soyuz. Of course, we today look back to the Soyuz and we see that it's had a long and successful career, you know, recent events notwithstanding, but in the early days they had a lot of problems getting it started. And the failure I want to talk about is Soyuz 7K OK number 1, which was one of the first launch vehicles built, it wasn't the first one launched. For complicated reasons, 7K OK number 2 launched first and was supposed to be met in orbit by number 1. But due to guidance issues, the spacecraft ended up tumbling and they held back on the launch to correct some of the issues they discovered. This footage here is from Soyuz 4, which was the crude version of the same mission plan, but it was many, many years later. Most of the rocket that I'm talking about never made it off the ground, and since it was a catastrophic failure, I have not been able to find any actual footage of the rocket or any pictures of the rocket. So instead, I have chosen to recreate the scenario using Kerbal Space Program. December 14th, 1966, the Soyuz was prepared for its test mission. The countdown began and the engines ignited. However, not all the engines ignited, so the automatic safety system shut down the engines and a fire suppression system was activated. After the fire had been dealt with, ground crews began to make their way to the pad to inspect the vehicle and try to determine what was wrong and whether they could perhaps fix it and get the launch done. Perhaps all they needed to do was replace the engine igniters, which on the Soyuz were 8 foot long matchsticks with electrically actuated pyrotechnic devices on the end. These may sound primitive, but they are still used today. The rocket had been safed, systems had been shut down, and the ground crews were beginning to move the access gantry back into place so that they could access the higher parts of the rocket. However, 27 minutes after the failed ignition, the launch escape system mysteriously activated, carrying the Soyuz capsule into the air, and unfortunately starting a fire at the top of the rocket. Understanding that the rocket was still very much fully fueled, and with many of the ground staff remembering the Nedalim disaster, everybody started running for it. It was surely just a matter of time until the fire triggered a full-on RUD for the booster stack. Some ran as far as they could, others found places so they could shelter, and then, of course, the rocket booster finally exploded. The launch pad was heavily damaged, necessitating months of repairs, and what they learned from this disaster led to many changes to the Soyuz design. But the exact sequence of events which led to this disaster is what, of course, this episode is about. There were three major questions that had to be answered by the investigators. The first was, why had the engines failed? Well, it looked like an oxygen valve had failed to open correctly, resulting in one of the boosters not generating thrust, so the whole thing had shut down. The second question is, why did the emergency escape system fire 27 minutes later? During the startup of the rocket, the automatic emergency escape system had been armed, and one of its one of the reasons it would trigger would be if the rocket was felt to be going off course. It would do this by continuously comparing its inertial guidance system against its expected guidance requirements. Of course, it was still sitting on the pad with t equals zero, so it was expecting to be sitting vertically on the pad. The system hadn't been disabled. Even though the gyroscopes had been depowered, they continued to spin from inertia, and so they continued to track. An early conjecture was that the service gantries on being brought up had somehow pushed the rocket seven degrees over, which was the threshold for the emergency escape system being activated. While that explanation was initially considered plausible, it would be one of the guidance engineers who would realize the significance of the 27 minute delay. It's easy to forget that the Earth rotates at a rate of one degree every four minutes. So while that rocket was sitting still on the pad, it was actually technically rotating very slowly, which meant that the gyroscope inside of it was slowly moving further and further away from its initial starting position. 
and the automatic abort system was taking this signal as a sign that the rocket was going progressively more and more off course. Because while the rocket was just sitting on the pad, it wasn't updating its reference orientation, so the uh, automatic abort system was just seeing this getting further and further out of spec. Now it's tempting to think that the 27 minutes is very close to 28, which when you divide it by 4 gives you 7, but since the rocket isn't at the equator, the actual angular change is slightly slower than that. So what it was doing was just making it more and more sensitive to the activities of the people working on the rocket until it got nudged just enough to push it over the limit and the escape system fired. Even although the launch had failed, the emergency escape system had continued to be powered because in the event you had real astronauts on there, they might a condition might develop which could re require them to escape. So this did actually show that the launch escape system worked surprisingly well, which was great for the team that had worked on that. Now there's the question of the fire and why it started and why it destroyed the rocket. So as you know, the Soyuz comes in three parts. You have the orbital module, the descent vehicle where the astronauts sit, and the instrument assembly module at the rear, which has all the instrumentation, fuel, and other services. During an abort, the first two modules have to be pulled away, but that means the spacecraft has to separate along the plane between the descent module and the service module. All of the plumbing and electrical connections between the two modules are cut using a series of 32 pyrotechnic modules, including the connections for the cooling system. Severing these connections caused the coolant to start leaking out into the interstage area, and unfortunately the pyrotechnics also ignited the fluid. I haven't seen any documents that specifically say what that uh, fluid was, but there's a whole bunch of examples of uh, Russian electronics and aviation which use high-grade ethanol as their coolant, and that would burn rather well. Ultimately, it wasn't just that the fluid was leaking out, but the service module was continuing to actively pump this onto the fire and make things worse. Another interesting revelation comes from Russia Space Web, Anatoly Zak, who does great stuff on all these Soviet launches. Uh, he pointed out that there was actually a test of the launch escape system three days before this launch, and they had the exact same problem with the cooling lines being severed, leaking, and burning. However, in the test, the pumps did not continue to pump the fluid onto the fire, and it was considered that it was highly unlikely that the launch escape system would fire on the pad anyway. And so while they anticipated making changes to the launch escape system, they didn't see that this was sufficiently high priority that they should delay the launch in a few days' time. But changes to the system were eventually made. The protocols for uh, activation of the abort system were reworked. The fluid in the cooling system was replaced by something that wasn't so combustible. And the Soyuz program continued. They had one more launch without any crew. And in 1967, Soyuz 1 launched with Vladimir Komarov on board. Unfortunately, that mission ended in tragedy, killing the pilot. But of course the story of Soyuz 1 requires an entire episode dedicated to it. But Soyuz now has over 50 years of success behind it, and that launch escape system which caused so much trouble, we were pretty glad that it worked well last year. I'm Scott Manley. Fly safe. Fly safe.